Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with another special guest. And I do emphasize the word special on this guest for the gratitude uh, interview regarding the pandemic. And with me today is George Tolls. And I think about, uh, gosh, I've known George a, a number of years and uh, a long time. And he's been an inspiration to me as he has been to many. And so I'm so happy to welcome to the interview, the podcast. George, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, David. And I'm so glad you mentioned your middle name. I love that name. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That is, that is something we share in common. So anyway, so, so let me get, the reason I'm doing this too is to have what we could really do is share the wisdom of people with a couple of questions that I have that people may see this and think, gosh, I liked it when George Toll said this or another comment or a thought or an idea. So first question, what has been, it's been about four or five weeks now, what has been your best coping mechanism to deal with this pandemic? You know, we all look at life through different lenses, David. And I think it depends on the lens that you have, that you're looking out at the world and trying to put your life in context. Mm -hmm. And um, you, can, you can look at this as a, as, a, as a human crisis, a disaster, which it is. You can look at it as uh, an opportunity. You're seeing new businesses pop up, new ways of people communicating and relating to each other. I think that. Uh, I've chosen to look at it through the lens of, of the scriptures. And mm -hmm. I believe that as King Solomon said, everything that happens in this world happens at the time God chooses. Uh, not necessarily something that he made happen. It could be something that he allowed to have happen. But mm -hmm. I've, I've looked at this in, in the fact that God is in control. This has proven to me once again that I'm not in control. I mean, I'm hogtied like the rest of us are at the home base here. Mm -hmm. we, we're having a ball in our house. We're just oh, having a great. great time. And this is, this is a, an enforced togetherness. <laughs> and we're just uh, we're having a chance to tackle some projects that we've procrastinated on for years. We've gone through all of our movies, our family movies, and our uh, photographs. And my grandson has scanned them all, and Liz has gone through and put them in chronological order. And we're going to be putting them on the Internet. Oh, so that nice. people around the world can see... They can tune in by decade, by person, by event. And uh, so. Oh, nice. It's, it's one of those things where you said years ago, one of these days, if I have time, I'll do this. Right. And this has been dropped into our laps. And so we're, we're making the most of it. Perhaps another silver lining we were just chatting about too. So do you, do you notice, George, when you focus on what you're grateful for, has it changed uh, versus, say, five or six weeks ago, what you're grateful for? Have you noticed any difference in the same type of things that's at the top of your list? I'm grateful for the fact, yes, I think you're absolutely right. It's a good question. I'm grateful for the fact that I'm content with where I am. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't need to be on the road running around town. Yeah. Uh, I've, I'm right here at world headquarters of his deal <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and people come to me and I go to them. And, and so it's, um, it's just a realization that uh, life is good. Yeah. Life is yeah. good. And this is not to minimize the disasters and the tragedies that are going on. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And, and you mentioned, George, you mentioned projects and, and uh, life is good and you're going to get those things all taken care of and so forth. Any thoughts or ideas for somebody that may not have as much going on in their life about things that they could be doing right now uh, during this time when everybody's kind of housebound? Absolutely. You know, um, your theme is gratitude and you're doing a wonderful job of getting the world to be thankful and to appreciate what they have. Thank and you. I think this is a wonderful time for us to uh, make a list of the people who have been there at the crossroads of our lives. Mm. And just go through each decade and just put down one or two people from that decade. And then if you can, get in touch with them. Mm -hmm. You know, they say that it's, it's, it's one thing to have a heart full of gratitude. It's another one to express it. Right. It, it's, the difference is, uh, you know, like winking at a pretty girl in the dark. Mm. Only you know it, she <laughs> doesn't know it. So it's, it, this is an opportunity. And I have two that come to mind. When I was a young lad growing up in Memphis, my parents got divorced and I had to go off to boarding school. And some ladies in a Bible class at Bellevue Baptist Church helped my mother who had to go back to nursing. Back, this is back in the 50s, mid 50s. Had to go back into nursing and wasn't making enough money to put me through school. 
And this Women's Bible class sent my mother a check every month for three years of my high school and four years of my college degree. Wow. And it didn't occur to me, David, shame on me until I was in my 40s that wow. I thought, I've got to thank that group of ladies. Oh, wow. And of course, by that time, they were mostly all gone. But I did write to Pastor Adrian Rogers down at Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis. And I, I made a mental list, of, made a mental note there that I can't wait that long. Well, also, <laughs> at the, about that time, I went by my old fourth grade teacher's uh, home. And I'd never been to her house before in Memphis on a trip down there. And we sat on the front porch and had sweet tea. And I was able to tell her what a wonderful teacher she was. She gave me such a great start in life. I loved her attitude. She was demanding. And so if you take this time right now, this is a wonderful time to reflect. And as you reflect, your heart becomes thankful. And as you, as you become thankful, you, ha you build hope and confidence that you can, there will be things to be thankful for again in the future. God's right. not done with us yet. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great point. And, and you mentioned some of those projects. I like the thing you said about the photo project too. And, and what do you think, is there anything right now, George, that you're thinking that when this is over and it is going to be different, as you said, for sure, but there will be a lot of good things that come out of it. But when there's a time when it's over and they have the vaccine and it gets back to some level of normal, maybe it's a different normal. Uh, can you think of anything now that you're doing now to sort of, I don't know, hit the ground running or be prepared when we come back out of this? Well, I think that uh, it's a matter of, of, again, keeping in perspective that this is a chance for us to deal with a problem and come together and find solutions together, and support each other, uh, realize that, uh, that people need help, that we need community. And um, just to have been revitalized by being close to your family, people that you love, this is, this is a, a wonderful uh, opportunity that God has given us that we really didn't expect, but that we hoped would happen. We're having such wonderful conversations in our, in our family with my son is here and my grandson and Liz, and we're talking about things that maybe we would never, we would have put off until too late, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do we do if one of us should die? What if, you know, what, what do we do about paying the bills? Uh, what, what's the insurance? What's in the bank? Uh, who do we notify? And so these are conversations that nobody likes to have. Right. But if you, if you, if you take it as a, a positive opportunity, you can uh, have a great sense of relief and satisfaction and fulfillment when you, once you've done it. Sure. And so I would, I think that that's what we're going to come out of this, having accomplished several things that we would have never done as we not had this uh, situation. That's absolutely true. And, you know, that's, that's a great point. And so last question, George, do you have what you would kind of call uh, an overarching, maybe a quote, possibly a verse from the Bible, something that is kind of your mantra or sort of the overarching thing that you look to, whether it's going through something like this or that kind of directs you through your life? Is there one saying or quote or philosophy that you kind of use that uh, sort of uh, directs George Tolls? Wow, what a great question. Uh, Romans 12, 12, Paul's letter to the Christians in Rome. Uh, and that verse in verse 12 in chapter 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Mm. So I want to be joyful in hope. It's, it's, it's not a hope that says, I wish things would get better. I wish we'd hurry up and get over this. It's a hope that's built on uh, solid confidence in God, whose promises are unbreakable. So I can have hope, but I can be joyful in that hope. Yeah. Smile. Like, your, your smiles are contagious. Every Monday morning, I got another smile from David George Wood. The second one is to be patient in affliction. Mm -hmm. Affliction is not something that we're all going to avoid. I mean, until I was 65, I, I had perfect health. And then things began, the wheels began to come off at, yeah. at 65. But it's important for me to be patient in this affliction. Yes. The other thing is faithful in prayer. And that's just to keep talking to God, mumbling to God. And uh, those, that's my mantra, brother. Yeah. That's good. That's excellent. Well, just as I suspected, quite a few gems and nuggets in there. So <laughs> thank you so much for participating. I really appreciate it. And we will chat soon. Thank you for all you do for all of us, David. Oh, thank you, George. Thank you so much.